All right, recording has started. Welcome to the class, everyone. I'm sure the others will uh, join us. Uh, let's just um, pray together and then we get started in our class today on, on uh, faith. All right, who would like to pray? Could somebody just um, lead us in prayer as we get started? Okay, go ahead, Rob. Sid, can I go ahead? Father, we come to the throne of grace. Lord, thank you for this day you have given us. Thank you for this hour. Thank you for the supernatural hour. Lord, whatever we have learned, Lord, whatever we are going to learn about faith, Lord, let it should be used for the kingdom expansion and our daily lives also, Lord. Whatever we will be learning, Lord, let it be visible in our daily lives so that, Lord, we can set an example for all of the fellow believers on our neighbors as well lord whatever we are going to learn thank you for this heart thank you what we will be learning lord that it should be used for the kingdom expansion and our daily lives also the time you have given us lord thank you the day you have given us all the privileges you have given lord lord thank you for all the blessings lord in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. thank you all right good morning uh, once again welcome to this class we are continuing with um, our study on faith and uh, two weeks back, so last week we did not have class, but the week before, we were we started talking about um, different ways by which we can release our faith. That means you've got faith in your heart, faith in God, based on His Word, based on His promise, and how do we release that? How do we bring faith out of our hearts? so that it can work in life situations. You know, it can begin to do what God said it can do in our life situations, in our circumstances. And so we started talking about the fact that uh, confession releases faith. So that means we uh, speak our faith. We confess our faith. And that's one way by which we release our faith. So we covered a few things on that. So the plan for today is um, we will finish talking about confession and then we will talk about a few more ways by which we release faith, by which we exercise faith. And then, um, then if time permits today or definitely next week, we will get into how to exercise faith. That means everything we've learned so far, we'll just put it down in simple steps and say, when you want to exercise faith in God, here's how you do it, right? So we're learning about, we're going to learn about how to release faith in different ways. And then we're going to talk about how to exercise faith in God. So just put it all together in a simple, um, uh, uh, you can use the word steps or in a little framework so that we could use that in our day-to-day uh, -day lives as we seek to exercise our faith in God uh, for different things. So let's just go back to the notes that we were using two weeks back. I'm going to share that with us. And let's see here. So we were talking about confession, how it simply means, the, the word confession simply means to say what God wants us to say. Right? So we saw from the scriptures, both in the Old Testament and then in the New Testament, the word confession is used not just in the context of sin, but also it's used in the context of speaking what God has spoken. And speaking the word, or speaking your faith. And we started at Deuteronomy chapter 30, where in the Old Testament, God told his people, you know, you keep my word in your mouth. And so Paul uses the same thing in Romans 10, 6 to 10, and now, instead of uh, uh, in Deuteronomy 30, where it referred to the law or the command in Romans 10, 6 to 10, Paul replaces that with the message of Christ, the word of faith, um, the, what we are preaching and teaching about Jesus and what he's done for us and who he is. So we speak that. So the New Testament says, you speak, you confess Christ, who he is, what he has done, the message of Christ. You speak that. But the principle is the same, that you believe in your heart. You confess 
with your mouth. And then we looked at, you know, other scriptures that tell us that Jesus, the high priest of our confession, and we hold fast to our confession because he who promised is faithful. And then we looked at Mark 11, 22 to 24, uh, where Jesus is teaching us the importance of, uh, of speaking into life situations. He demonstrated that by just speaking to a fig tree and commanding the fig tree to dry up, be withered from the roots. And the next day, it was withered up from the roots. And then he gave the message to his disciples. See, this is how faith works. If you have faith in your heart, you speak it. And you don't doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say will come to pass. You will have what you say. So Jesus taught us that, that we can speak to life situations, speak to things in this realm, and things will change. Right? So we've covered all that. Um, let's just go ahead and look at a few more scriptures and uh, and uh, on on uh, confession or declaration or speaking our faith. And uh, then we will get into a couple of other ways by which we release faith. Let's go to Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, please. Somebody could read that for us. Um, Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, please. Let me make sure nobody's held outside class. So, okay, everyone's in. Okay, go ahead. 13, 5 and 6. Uh, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Amen. Amen. Now, I want, I just want to highlight something. I know Paul, you know, uh, not Paul, but the writer of Hebrews here is, um, is addressing several different things in this chapter. But I just want to point out um, what, what, what is being stated here in Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Notice he says in the middle, in, in the middle of verse 5, uh, he says, for he himself has said. And he gives a quote. This is what God said. Then he says, so we may boldly say. And then again, he gives us, uh, it's another quote. So what, what is the logic or the reasoning here? God has said something. So we boldly say something. God has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Notice that what we boldly say is in agreement with what God has already said. That's the point I want to bring our attention to. He has said, God spoke first. We boldly say, we affirm our agreement or we declare our agreement with what God has said. That's confession. God has said, by his stripes, you were healed. So we boldly say, by his stripes, I have been healed. God has said, the Lord, I am the Lord your shepherd. You will not be in want. So we boldly say. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not be in want. So that's declaration. We are speaking in agreement with what God has already spoken concerning us. So that is how faith is expressed. Right? It is us coming into agreement with what God has said. God has said something. And then you can read the Bible. There's so many wonderful promises that cover every area of life. And you take those promises that God has spoken, what God has already said about you, and then you come into agreement with that. God has said, so I boldly say. So somebody asks, you know, why are you so confident? Why are you speaking like this? Well, because God has said. God has said, so I boldly say. Because God will not 
lie. God will not speak untruth. And God will not speak something that uh, he will not back up. So God has said, so I boldly say. And that's confession. That's what faith, faith is. So really, faith is not some kind of a trick that we are trying to talk ourselves into. Right? It's not like, you know, just keep saying something, muttering something, and it'll happen. That's not that's not what faith is. It's really coming into agreement with God has already said. God has already said something about you, about your life, about different areas of your life. He's already spoken, said you'll, you'll be blessed. So you and I come into agreement with that. So what do we confess? What do we say? We say things, you know, we say what God has done for us in the plan of redemption. It means he's already done it. My sins are forgiven. I've been made the righteousness of God. I've been washed by the blood of Jesus. These are things God has already done for us. And so we are just coming into uh, agreement with it. Uh, we, we confess what God has done in us. You know, God has made me a new creation. He has uh, made me an overcomer. He has He gives me the victory through, my, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we confess who we are in Christ. You know, this is who we are to the Father in Jesus Christ. We are righteous. We are accepted. We are highly favored. Uh, we have been justified. Right? We confess uh, what Jesus is doing at the right hand of the Father. He's always, you know, interceding for us. He is causing us to triumph uh, and so on. Uh, we confess what we can, what God can do through us. So we say that, you know, through my God, we do valiantly, or I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God makes all grace abound toward me, that I always having all sufficiency in all things, I abound to every good work. Uh, in other words, we're essentially saying what God has already spoken, or we are saying what God has already done for us, and we are coming into agreement with God. Right? So that's uh, our confession. Now notice on the... Uh, in contrast to that kind of speaking, which is speaking in agreement with God, that is what we will call as wrong confession. Romans 10, 6. Uh, let's go to Romans 10, 6. Uh, we saw this last week. Uh, not, not last week, but two weeks back. Let's pick it up again. Romans chapter 10 and verse 6. Somebody could read that for us, please. Romans 10, verses 6. But the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down or who will descend into deep? What is to bring Christ up from the dead? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So Romans 10, 6 and 7. So it says, you know, faith, it says, do not speak like this. Do not say this. What do you not say? Don't say, who's going to go to heaven and bring Jesus from there? In other words, you know, hey, Jesus is so far away from me. He is in heaven. How is he going to come and help me? Or verse 7, do not say, who is going to go down into the deep to bring him up as if Jesus is dead? Oh, my God, uh, he's not doing anything. God is, you know, I don't think even God can help me. You know, you don't, we don't speak like that. So do not say, do not say, my God is so far away. God is not hearing my prayer. God doesn't care for me. God doesn't love me. Don't speak like that. Do not say, who's going to go to heaven to bring Christ down? Or who's going to go down to the deep to raise Christ up as though he's dead? No. So we say always, or we speak always in agreement with who God is what he has spoken, what he has done. That's the way faith speaks. If, if we are not doing that, then we are speaking wrong. We, you know, we just call it wrong confession. We are speaking about defeat and failure, talking about how big or how bad the devil is and how much he's doing. Uh, you know, and if we keep talking about how the devil is you know, holding us back, or holding in bondage, keeping us in sickness, uh, and... Uh, you know, glorifying the devil or speaking about our own failures or, uh, you know, the, this kind of speaking actually defeats us. And God has said, don't speak like that. Instead, I want to encourage all of us, you know, we always say what God has said about us in his word. 
And sometimes, even when we feel afraid, uh, we have doubts in our hearts, and uh, don't speak those things. Don't speak negative. You know, you talk to God and say, God, right now I'm feeling. You know, uh, I, I, I this is what I'm feeling. I'm feeling discouraged, but I thank you that you are my God. You know, so uh, I'm not saying deny your feelings. Sometimes, you know, you feel discouraged. You feel. Uh, you, Whatever you you know, if you feel the pain, you feel ang anxious, you feel worried or fearful, and those things are there. It's okay to talk to God, release really, Father. This is how I feel, but Your Word says, and so you're saying, God, this is how I feel, but I'm choosing to come into alignment or into agreement with Your Word. So don't, I'm not saying deny your feelings. But you're just moving in to uh, come into agreement with God and His Word, right? So, as practical instructions here, right? So, don't uh, we are not doing this as a mere technique. We know that this is what God's Word teaches us. Now, we are, you know, and we are not being uh, vain in our imaginations. Now, we are keeping our speaking aligned to the Word of God. To this is because it's a promise, because God has said. I'm saying this. So we are staying in alignment with the Word of God. We are not, you know, just randomly saying things, uh, wishful thinking, or, uh, you know, we are speaking according to God's Word. Okay? And uh, there are times when the Holy Spirit will inspire a word in our hearts, and then we speak as the Holy Spirit leads us. And uh, we speak that inspired word He may give concerning the situation. And uh, we are depending on God while we are exercising our faith. We are depending on God. And uh, also, uh, when we have contrary feelings, our senses, uh, uh, you know, we, we recognize it, but we always choose to take sides with God's word, right? The, 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 the times when our senses will be opposite to what God has promised, uh, we... We recognize what you know how we feel. We recognize what our senses are telling us, but we say, "God, I choose to come and stand on Your word and to hold on to Your word." Okay, so that's the first way to release our faith, which is by confession, by speaking aligned to the word. Let the word get into your heart. Put that word into your heart, and then speak aligned to the word okay now we're going to move forward and talk about a few other ways in which we release faith right we're going to talk about actions that means we act uh, aligned to our faith we do uh, whatever we can uh, practically in line with what we believe so actions demonstrate faith we're also going to talk about praise uh, praise also expresses faith. So that means in a situation where uh, things may be difficult, uh, when we praise God, that is also a way to express faith. Uh, and we're also going to talk about patience. Uh, that is, you are enduring, you're holding on patiently. That also is an expression of your faith, and it actually helps to mature uh, faith, right? So we want to talk about that. And then one more one more part is being determined, right? So we want to talk about determination. That means you don't let go. You're patient, but you're also determined to possess what God said you can have, right? So all of these confession, our praise, uh, our action, our praise, our patience, and our determination. These five things are involved in us releasing faith in God, right? And we're going to look at them. I'm just um, giving us an overview, right? So confession, what we say, action, what we do, praise, how we worship, patience, how we endure, or stand through time, and determination, our tenacity, our unwillingness to give up. 
these five things are, are really expressions of our faith in God. And God looks at these things in our lives, right? He looks at, okay, what are you speaking? Are you speaking a line to his word? What are you doing? That's your action. Are you taking some steps in line with your faith? Are you, you know, doing whatever you can, right? In line with your faith. Third, are you worshiping? Are you praising God? Are you thanking him? Are you expressing your praise to God in line with what he has promised? Four, are you patient? That means are you doing this through time? You know, it's easy to do it for five minutes someday, but what about the next day? What about the day after? Uh, what about the week later? Are you patient? And number five, are you determined? It's like you have committed yourself to seeing the end result of what God has promised in your life. Okay. So we've gone through confession now. I'm just going to go through the other, the other four. So actions demonstrate our faith. That means uh, we start doing things aligned to the promise of God or aligned to what God has said. Okay, so um, we look at some scriptures and some of these we, we have seen earlier. But let's go to Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11. Uh, I'll cover a little bit of ground and then I'll pause to take uh, any questions uh, that you may have. Okay, let's go to Second Thessalonians chapter 1 and somebody could read verse 11, please. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11. With this in mind, be constantly praying for you that our God may count you worthy of his calling and that by his power he may fulfill every good purpose of yours and every act prompted by your faith. Mm. Notice every, uh, in the in the version that Sid can read, every act prompted by faith. Or the New King James says, the work of faith. The work of faith. So faith is not, it's faith is of the heart. It's what you have inside you. You believe in God. But then faith works. Faith begins to do something. Right? It begins to act out what it believes. Um, and this verse is telling us, and Paul is praying, that God would fulfill or complete your work of faith with power. So that means we step out and we do our work of faith. Then God comes along and completes that with his power. So God's power goes into operation when you and I begin to act our faith. When you and I begin to do something in faith, God's power goes into operation. Right? So that's, that's important. So what can you do, right? So uh, example, if you're believing God for healing, all right, so you, you put the word of God concerning healing into your heart, then you begin to start speaking aligned to that, saying, declaring God is my healer. And then now you begin to act your faith. You, you know, uh, take steps towards that, you know, whether... Uh, maybe uh, yeah, trying to do something that you could not do, maybe get up to walk a little bit or, um, you know, if somebody's sick and on the bed, uh, at, at their, at, at whenever they're able to, they can step out, begin to start acting their faith, say, God, I believe I'm going to be able to walk. I'm going to be able to do this. So whatever is possible, right? Whatever you start acting your faith. Start putting your faith to work. Say, God, this is what I'm expecting to be like. I'm expecting to move into. So you start taking steps aligned to that. Now, if you are believing God for an a increase, say, in, in your work, in your professional life, so what do you do? You, you prepare yourself that way. Then you begin, you put God's word into your heart concerning promotion, concerning increase, concerning favor, 
put in your heart that you begin to declare that. God gives me favor in my workplace. God gives me and brings promotion and increase in my life. Then you also begin to start acting in line with that. You know, maybe uh, whatever it needs, you know, for you to uh, move up. Maybe you take some courses, extra courses, or maybe you just be diligent in your work. And, you know, that, that's demonstrating, say, God, I'm positioning myself. I'm putting myself ready to see this increase that I believe, based on your word, you will bring to me. Right? So whatever you can do to express that, God, I'm ready. I'm waiting for this thing to happen in my life. You take those steps. Right? And, and when we work our faith, the, like the scripture says, the power of God. God fulfills our work of faith with power. Let's also go to James chapter 2. And um, we will read that passage that James 2. I want to just bring our attention to some of these scriptures. So James chapter 2. We can read verses uh, 14 through, I guess we can read the whole passage. Um, James chapter 2, verse 14 to 26. Let's just read the whole passage. James 2, 14 to 26, please. Somebody could read it. James chapter 2, verse 14 to 26. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and no one of you says to them, uh, sorry, and one of you says to them, uh, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the de demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham a father justified by works when he offered Isaac, Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his words? And by works, faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Amen. Yeah, thank you. All right. It's a, it's, it's a lengthy passage, James 2, 14 to 26. But let's just highlight some of the things uh, that, that, that are in line with what we are saying here. So James is teaching us here that, look, if you, if you have faith in your heart, it's not enough to say, oh, I have faith in my heart. That faith has to be demonstrated by what you do. Right? And so he gives us different examples or, or so he says, look, if somebody is hungry, you, you don't just say go, you don't just speak nice words to him or go, you know, God keep you warm and God bless you. And that's good. That's good, you know, to speak comforting words. But you've got to do something. You help that person. Then he talks about Abraham. He says, look at Abraham. He believed God. Yeah. But he also did something. He, even to the point where he took his own side, uh, son Isaac uh, to the altar that, and was ready to offer him up because he believed that, you know, God would bring him back. And, you know, he went all the went through, say, I'm ready to offer because I believe. And Abraham acted his faith. He talks about another person called Rahab. Now, she was uh, uh, a woman who was on the walls of the city of Jericho. And as people were coming, as, as Israel was preparing to attack Jericho, 
she believed that God was with these people, with the, the, the Israelites. She believed that. But she also did something. She, first of all, she protected the spies who came to spy out uh, the place. And then she also hung the scarlet thread out her window, just like she was instructed to do. That means she did something. She believed, and then she did something. So the point that James is, so James repeats the point that he wants us to get. He repeats it several times in verse 17, in verse 20, and again, verse 26. Three times he says, faith without works is dead. Three times in this passage. So that's the point he wants to get across to us. Faith without works is dead. Oh, that means if, uh, if he does not have cooperating actions, Faith was cooperating with his actions. I mean, that's Weymouth's translation. Or if he doesn't have actions that express his faith, then faith is dead. That means it can't produce. Faith is lifeless. So it is very important for us to have actions, doing something aligned to what we believe. And that's what causes faith to, quote unquote, give life, I mean, do something or uh, express life, right? Because faith without actions is lifeless. It can't produce, right? That's, that's what James is getting to us. So it's important for us to express our faith by what we do. And not only that, we see here in verse 22, in talking about Abraham, he says, the latter part of verse 22, by works, faith was made perfect. That means by what he did, his faith was brought to a place of perfection or uh, maturity. Right? That means it, it, it came to that place where it could produce. So understand that we must have faith. That we must have works that express our faith. Start doing something aligned to what you believe, right? And we see so many, many examples in the Bible, and I just highlighted a few here. In Mark 2, you know, we read about these four uh, friends who brought one of their friends who was paralyzed. They brought him on a mat to Jesus, to the house where Jesus was. The house was full. They went up to the roof and they let him down. And the Bible says Jesus saw their faith. How did he see their faith? Because of what they did. They, they brought the man. And they didn't just, you know, get discouraged because there was no space to, uh, for, to get into the house. They took an extra step. They made extra effort to go to the roof and let him in. So Jesus saw their faith. Right? In Acts 3, we find that when Peter and John were passing by this uh, man who was lame, it's very interesting. When Peter tells this man, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk, it's very interesting. He took him by the right hand and lifted him up. See, that's an act of faith. He took him by the right hand and lifted him up. His faith was doing something because he believed God will heal this man and he's going to walk. And so he says, so it says, so he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And then he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. So that's, again, an example how he, uh, in ministering healing, he exercised faith. And so that, like these, there are so many examples in the Bible. In uh, 2, Kings, uh, 2 Kings chapter 5, 
uh, you know, we have, and this is an Old Testament example, where uh, the uh, Naaman, who's the captain of, or the commander of the army for the king of Syria, you know, he comes and meets the prophet, uh, prophet Elisha, to be healed of a leprosy. And the prophet tells him, you know, go dip yourself in the river seven times, River Jordan, seven times. Now, this man was actually pretty upset. He said, you know, why didn't the prophet come and lay hands on me or do something? Why is he telling me to go and dip in the river seven times? I could go back home and I could, you know, dip in that river. Uh, but then, you know, one of his uh, soldiers advised him, hey, just do what the prophet said, you know. So he gets to the river and he dips, dips in seven times and he's healed. So we learn there that simple obedience to God's word. You know, you act in line with what God said. Do what God said. And simple obedience to God's word is going to give us the results, right? And, and uh, Jesus, you know, he taught us the importance of hearing and doing the sayings. That means you start doing it. And as you do the word, you're actually building yourself up on, uh, let's like the house being built on the rock. You've got a solid foundation. The storms of life will come. But as a doer of the word, somebody's acting on the word, you're secure. You're, you will be standing and, uh, uh, and you know, even if storm comes, storms come, you will uh, stand through the storm. Right. So here's the second thing that I want to emphasize and that the Bible teaches. And I've just, you know, highlighted a few scriptures that we need to have actions aligned to our faith. Right. Just so you act in line with your faith. Few, few other things here. Third way <clears throat> to express faith is through praise. So when we have faith in God, what do we do? We praise God in faith even before we see the answer. Right? And we saw this example in, in, in the case of Abraham in Romans 4, where the Bible says he was strengthened in faith giving glory to God. So even before he saw the outcome, even before he saw the result, he just said, Father, I, I'm just, I don't know exactly what words he may have used, but I'm imagining, right? Father, I praise you that you are faithful to your word, that uh, you have blessed me with Isaac. Father, I thank you or, or that you blessed me with a son and that you have, you have made me a father of a great nation. So he is giving glory to God even before the thing has happened. And that strengthened his faith, right? So that's the third way we express faith. You know, we praise God. And sometimes uh, we praise God even when things are not easy. You know, and I think a great example would be Paul and Silas who are in prison in Acts, the 16th chapter, you know, they they found themselves in prison. And at midnight, it says, they began to sing and praise God. So that's just a great and encouraging example for us. You know, when and I, I'm looking at Acts 16, 25 and 26, you know, uh, uh, Acts 16, 25 and 26, uh, it tells us Paul and Silas were put in prison, the inner prison. They were in chains. The feet were in stocks. Um, so there was really no chance for them to get out. And yet, in a situation like that, the Bible says that they were singing hymns and praising God. You know, they that's, that's something. Uh, so they were not out of their situations. They were not out of their difficulty. But in the difficulty, they were praising God. In the middle of their problem they were praising god and then what happened god moved uh, in such a powerful way the chains came off the prison doors were open and you know god just intervened powerfully in their lives now we may not always see every prison door and opened and every chain loosed uh, you know the same night that we start praising god sometimes we may have to praise him many nights uh, but you just continue doing that because you know that praise expresses 
your faith in God. And simple words like, Father, I thank you for your word. Your word is truth. Thank you that your word will never fail. Thank you for who you are. You know, that is you expressing faith in God. And it is very important. It's a very important way to express faith in God. So we've seen three so far, confession, action, praise. The fourth one is to be patient, right? Uh, and you find this in several places. Can somebody read Hebrews 6, 12 and also Hebrews 10, 35, 36 for us, please? Hebrews 6, 12. That you do not become sluggish, but but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Hebrews 10, 35 and 36 also, please. Hebrews 10, 35. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Mm. Amen. So notice the words patience or endurance. Right? So what the scripture is telling us? It says, imitate those who through faith and patience inherit or receive the promises. Then in Hebrews 10, he says, don't let go, of your, let go of your confidence, the faith you have. There is a great reward. It's, the outcome will, you know, is there. But what do we need? We need endurance. After we've done the will of God, which is to believe God and act in line with his word and praise him, we've done the will of God. What do you need? We need endurance so that we may receive the promise. So the scriptures are telling, teaching us here. In addition to faith, I need patience. I need endurance, right? So being patient. Now, it's not easy. You know, we, we like everything to happen very fast. Sometimes, you know, things happen really quickly. There are times when, uh, you know, you believe in God for something, it happens right away. But then there are times when you and I just have to be patient. We have to endure until we receive the promise. And from the time you start exercising your faith till you receive the promise, what do you do? Just keep doing these same things. Keep confessing the word, keep acting your faith, keep praising God and stay patient. Stay in endurance, don't quit. Right? Think about Abraham, you know, uh, he waited actually you know, it's it's more than 10 years. You know, from the time God called him to the time he actually saw the promise was 25 years. So 15 years in between, God reassured him. Right? And so even after God reassured him, this he had waited another 10 years before the promise actually happened. But he did not become weak in faith. He's was firm in faith. And that's why here it tells us, you know, it's actually referring to Abraham. Follow his faith. He waited, right? And so we know we have to hold fast to the confession of our faith without wavering because God who promised is faithful, right? Why can we endure? Why can we stay the course? Because he who promised is faithful. God is faithful. Now, I know many times we say, God, why is it taking so much time? I mean, I know you can snap your finger and things can happen, but why is it taking time? And we'll address that a little bit. But how do we endure through time? Knowing that he who promised is faithful. We are relying on his faithfulness. God will not fail. God will not you know, fall back. I'll go back on his promise so we know he's faithful. And while we are waiting, what is happening to us? Our perseverance, our endurance 
is developing character in us. It's strengthening who we are. We are becoming better people. We are becoming stronger. Character is being formed in us. We are also people who are learning to have hope. That means we are learning to stay positive even in the middle of our waiting. And we can do it because of the love of God. We are assured of the love of God. So this waiting period is actually doing good for us. Our character is being developed. Our hope is being strengthened. And our experience of God's love is becoming richer as we endure. So this journeying through time, this enduring uh, 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 is not a wasted thing. Things are happening to us while we endure through time. Okay, and just uh, uh, one one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that certain things God has a perfect timing. He has a timing. The Bible says, you know, He makes all things. We know the scripture, uh, Ecclesiastes three verse eleven, right? He makes all things beautiful in his time, right? Um, so God has that established time and he will bring it in its perfect time. So even if it means us waiting, you know, it's, it's not, it's not, it, we may think, God, uh, no, I really need it right now or it has to happen now. It's okay. Just wait and trust in the fact that he will make it beautiful in the perfect time. God, I know you'll do it perfect in perfect time. I, my faith is that it will be done. It will happen. And so you wait, you and I wait for perfect time. Right? So we have to endure by faith. We endure through time. That is, even if it's, you know, doesn't happen as quickly as possible. We endure through time. We endure through testing. So, and that means our faith will be tested. And we endure through it. Now, testing is not an inducement to sin. But it is a demonstration of our commitment to God. So sometimes our faith will be tested. So how can it be tested? For example, you may want to give up. Or sometimes there could be some other option, which may not be the right thing to do. So you say no to the other option, and you choose to wait for God's word to take place in your life. So faith could be tested that way. So we endure through time, we endure through tests. In Abraham's case, we know God told him to offer his son, Isaac. And Abraham was more than willing to do that. And we also endure through trials. That means adversities, hardships. You're having faith, but it's getting harder. You're having faith, but it's becoming more difficult. You're having faith, but situation is not changing right away. Hold on, hold on. You endure through trials. Uh, I will pause right after this here. It says, James 1, 2 to 4. He says, brethren, come to joy when you fall into it. It's trials, that means hardships. Because these are just testing your faith and it's developing patience in you. When patience has its perfect work, that means it runs its full course, you'll come out perfect and complete lacking nothing. So our faith will be tested through the trials that we have to face, the hardships. So you're believing God. Sometimes it gets hard, but you just hold on. Your faith is being tested through that hardship, through the difficulty. But then you endure and what will happen? You will come out complete, perfect not lacking anything. Okay, so I'm going to pause here. I know it's uh, we've reached uh, the end of this hour. Uh, 
and um, everyone is following with me. Any questions before we go for our break? Actually, I have a question. Uh, actually, I put, it, I put it in the chat, and it's uh, regarding. You might have addressed it already, but uh, yeah. Is that a denial of the reality of the natural? How can we press on when circumstances are the same in spite of the waiting? How can we encourage someone who's going through difficult circumstances? Right. So, you know, uh, when we are, are, are having faith in God, it doesn't mean we are denying the situation. Right. Okay. You, we realize, God, I know right now this is what is happening. This is what I'm facing. Uh, this is the way things are. This is the reality of the natural situation. I recognize it. I'm not in denial of it. But I am believing your word. Right? So why do we have, uh, why do we praise God in the middle of the situation? Because we believe his promise. Why do we, you know, stay positive in the middle of uh, the situation? Because we believe his promise. We are not denying his promise. We are not denying, uh, we're not denying the situation or we're not denying what we are facing. This is what we are facing. It's sometimes hard, it's sometimes difficult, it's sometimes painful. But we are believing his promise. That's why we praise. That's why we patiently endure. Okay. And uh, how can we encourage someone who are going through difficult circumstances yeah so the uh, you know the the encouragement we can give is two things to point to the faithfulness of god god is faithful and point to the integrity of god's word right god is faithful he's he's, he's, he's faithful to you and secondly, as so long as you're believing the Bible, you're believing the Word of God, you're believing the right thing. Right? So we encourage them that way. You know, and uh, we may not have answers as to why the uh, situation doesn't change right away. We may not have an answer as to why the answer doesn't come immediately. But we can succeed. We don't, we, so, and we don't have to try to answer that because we don't know. But what we can say is, we know God is faithful. We know the Bible is true. His promise is true. And that's the way we can, and that's basically what we all need to be reminded of. Hey, God is faithful. He's not a liar. Second, his word is truth. Just hold on to his word. And we need to be reminded, and that will encourage us during those Testing times, times of trial, times of difficulty. Okay, thank you, Pastor. I had a follow up. Can I mm -hmm. ask now or? Uh, um, let's do it right after when we come from the break. Okay, 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 yeah? Pastor. Thank you. Okay, we will pause here. I will just go for a break, and right after the break, we'll come back and we will take up the VS question. Thank you, everyone. To have a quick break, 10 minutes, and we'll be back, please. Thank you. <laughs> 